So I just got done watching the latest video from Maker's Muse and immediately needed to run off and make this video. If you haven't already, I'll have it linked down below where he's talking about his favorite support settings and how he ensures his prints are gonna print better and more easily remove those supports, just add more stability to those. But those are really specific to those grid supports and he goes into detail why he's not uh, necessarily a big fan of some of the organic supports for some of your more larger complex objects. Well, I wanna go in and and give you some of my favorite settings that I use for printing things like my helmets and masks on these 3D printers using those organic settings as well as one other setting that I just recently found out about that completely changes how I'm 3D printing moving forward. And here are a few examples of different helmets and masks that I've run off in 3D printed on a bunch of different 3D printers, ranging from the Bamboo Lab P1S to the P1P to the Prusa XL to the new Neptune 4 Max and the Neptune 4 Plus. Now, with all of these, I'm using those organic tree looking supports that you can find pretty much in every slicer now from Cura to Prusa Slicer to Orca Slicer. Uh, it's excluded from Simplify 3D, funny enough, but uh, you can use these and it's going to help you greatly reduce the amount of material that you use. But one issue that I've run into while initially working with these is just they printed good, but getting the print uh, to actually separate from the supports. And as you can see here, like they just break free now. And that's because I've modded some of the settings in there. And especially when you're running off and printing some of these bigger prints, like some of your larger helmets, there are a few adjustable settings that you'll definitely want to consider before running off and printing those. So here we're in Orca Slicer, which is a variation of Prusa Slicer, which is a variation of Super Slicer and Cura, you name it. Uh, but inside here is your support settings. So here, if I go up to the top, you'll see here, I've got the tree selected here. I, uh, there are in Orca Slicer and uh, Bamboo Studio, there are multiple different tree options. I just more or less stick to the default. You can mess around with those if you'd like. I typically am sticking with a 30% threshold for the support angle or lower, so I might go down to 20 or even 15% if I think I can get away with it. Um, critical regions only is typically something that I'll have selected as well. Now, when it comes into the key settings here, one of the things I want you to pay attention to is the top Z distance. 0.25 to 0.28 to even a 0.3 is really good for ensuring that your supports are still gonna support the model, but more able to be easily released from the print. Now, one caveat to this is I have seen issues with certain filaments where it more or less just fuses together, regardless of what setting I plug in there. It's just susceptible to fusing together. So here, if we take a look at this here, I can run off and slice this and we'll see that it's gonna generate our supports. Now this looks pretty fine and dandy, which is what I've run off and 3D printed with. But if I wanted to adjust this even further, one thing that I wanted to call out or two other settings that I wanted to call out here is the branch density options. So here currently it's the default is 30%. Depending on how severe the overhang is or how large of a print I'm trying to print with, I might bump that up to 50 or 60% and rerun this here. Now, because these are smaller horns, it might be a little less obvious, but these definitely are providing you with more branches along the path that it's gonna generate. Now, the other thing that you can also do is the actual diameter of those supports. So when I'm printing anything that's really large, like a large helmet or a prop or something like that, that's gonna, again, be generating these really tall tree supports, I'm gonna bump that up to about a four or five. And what you'll see here is it should generate some really chunky and thick supports versus those thinner ones that again are more susceptible to failing. One other cool thing about all these tree or organic supports, at least what I've seen in the past, is even if some of them fail, a lot of times they'll end up catching and rebuilding on top of each other when it gets close to the area that it's trying to print and support. All right, now here's the really cool setting that I wanted to share with you all. Here is a bust by Eastman that I've run off in 3D printed on the Neptune 4 Max. I went in here and I scaled this up by 200% scale. Typically, this should be able to print without more or less supports. You might need some in a few key areas, as least what Eastman mentioned. However, since I'm scaling this up to 200% the scale, it's just absolutely massive. It was going to require a number of supports. So here, if I come in here and just generate with the settings that I've got in place, we should see that it's gonna generate some along the arm and along the back of this particular bust. And I'll give it a minute here to generate. 
So here's a look at this model. Just it's it's supported now. So it's went in and supported a whole bunch of areas on the back of the print. However, if I wanted to run off and print this with minimal support usage, there is a setting in Orca Slicer and Cura called make overhang printable that you can select. Now there are setting options that you can adjust the angle at which that's gonna account for. I've just left it as default for the most part here and we'll rerun these and it should remove almost all of the supports. Now it's gonna modify the geometry of your 3D print. So keep that in mind. It might not be perfect for all models that are out there, but for things that are like organic busts like this or even in ca some cases, some different helmets and masks, it might be a perfect option to reduce the amount of supports that you're going to need. Now, my camera has a horrible time trying to pick up these prints on camera. It's just they're so bright and neon. But here are the two prints. This one is the first one I printed with supports originally, and it just did not print very well. I didn't have the supports or settings dialed in as well as I should with this. And then here is the support free version that printed, I think, four or five hours faster than this other one here zero supports, no anything that was needed on the back of this. This is wild. And if you look really closely here and compare the two prints, you can see where it's slightly modified some of the geometry of the model to reduce some of those sharp overhangs that were on the back of the body here. And again, that setting is only currently available in Cura and Orca Slicer. I have no idea why it's not in Prusa Slicer or in Bamboo Studio. It really should be because it's such an amazing setting for you to play around with to help reduce some of the filament that you're using as well as reduce some of the print times of the objects that you're printing. I wanted to say a big thank you to all my Patreon members for your continued support of me making content here on the interwebs. If you're interested in things like my 3D printer settings, you can find those over in my Patreon. Also, a big thank you to Makers Muse for making that awesome video. Uh, hopefully this helped some of you with some of your uh, tree organic supports here and some of those settings. And if you have any further tips on things that you like to do to get better results with your tree supports, let me know in the comments down below. I just want to say thanks again for watching you all and I'll see you next time.